I'm going to show you everything there is to know about this X1. So again, this command dial just moves you through the groups. And by default, there are five groups. You can access the channel by hitting the channel button and you can modify the channel that you're on. When you pick a group that you want, hit group and you can change either compensation or if it were in manual, hitting group would allow you to adjust the power. Mode will allow you to cycle between manual, off, and TTL. On this side, you'll find on off button for the light as well as on off button for the autofocus assist beam. Now let's talk about the custom functions menu. If we hold channel for two seconds, we will access the custom function menu. Custom function zero allows you to adjust the flash timing. So you can actually create a small delay from zero to 100 milliseconds to delay the flash power. Hitting group allows you to modify this custom function and from there you can increase or decrease the delay. Some people use this to effectively create hypersync if they're using a different trigger. Other people use it to kind of create that second curtain sync if your camera doesn't have that feature in it already. Hitting group will confirm your choice and we're gonna leave that at zero. Custom function one is simply single pin mode. So you can turn the single pin mode on or keep it off. Single pin will only utilize the single pin to transmit the fire signal. It will not do any TTL. Some people use this when using the X1 with a different brand other than what they have just to eliminate all the TTL functions being communicated. Custom function two allows you to change the zoom of your off-camera flashes. Now in order for your flashes to receive this signal, your flashes must be in auto mode in order for them to receive zoom that you set here. Custom function three controls how the PC sync port operates. So if it's in, then it's going into a camera so that it's essentially ready to receive a signal. And if it's in out, let's change it to out real quick, then it's sending a signal out of the PC sync slot so that you can trigger a flash. Custom function four sets up multi-flash. You can see the three little lightning bolts right there indicating multiple flashes. So we can turn that on. And if we do that and we leave, now it's going to have a different type of navigation. So hitting mode will switch a group on or off. Holding mode will allow you to modify that specific group for its power output, which is on the top, the time, and the amount of flashes per second, which is what the H stands for with Hertz. There's supposed to be a P there. I'm not really sure why there isn't on the Fuji. Custom function five is the minimum power setting. You can change this to one 256 and lights like the 8600 have a minimum power output of one 256. So this just allows you to reach that or you can leave it in one 128th if you're only using it with speed lights. Custom function six allows you to modify the AF assist beam on or off. Custom function seven allows you to choose between three or five groups, which if you're only using the speed lights, you may as well leave it in three groups because there's only three groups that you can choose from. So you may as well not spend excess time navigating with the D and E option. However, if you're using an 8600, 8200 and you want all five groups, you can leave that on. Custom function eight, modifies the beep on the 8600, whether it's going to be on or off. Finally, custom function eight chooses whether the 8600's beep is on or off. There's some other functions you can access with some input selections on the X1. The first is the way to control this. So by default, this dial will control navigating through the different groups. But if you don't like that, you can also change it to this. You can hold down the channel button for five seconds. So in this mode, the dial will not advance the groups. You have to hit the group button to advance between the different groups. And we've also got it down to only three groups right now. Once you hit a group, you can change its mode. When you're active on a group, then you can use the dial to increase or decrease the power. And you can hit OK, channel slash OK to exit. Some people prefer that method of controlling and navigating the X1. I like the default option a little bit better. Double clicking the channel button will turn LED capable lights on and off. So 8600 or 8200, that'll turn the modeling slash LED lamp on and off. Lastly, you can hold down groups and that will select all your active groups and modify them at the same time. 
This is good if you've got a ratio that you've like dialed in. Instead, you can just use this to compensate for any changes that you made to your camera settings and affect all the groups at the same time. Lastly, there's some unique ways to turn the unit on that have different results. So one that I'm gonna do by default is holding the channel button and turning on will restore factory defaults. Turn it back off, holding the group button and turning the unit on will show all the LED indicators. And lastly, holding mode and turning it on will display the firmware version in the upper right corner so that you can check if you need an update.